Saving for retirement is like a three ring circus. Grab your tickets, folks, and get ready for the show. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Joe Anderson here, certified financial planner, president up here, financial advisors. And of course, I'm with the big man, Big Al Clopine. He's sitting right there. You ready for the circus, Al? Love the circus. You, you, did you like the circus as a kid? Not really. <laughs> I'll tell you what I liked. I like the elephants and I like the cotton candy. Okay, well there's a lot of elephants and a lot of cotton candy in this show, <laughs> let me tell you what. The Secure 2.0 is now into law. And what happened with this? It's allowing another $40 billion of us US citizens to save for retirement. Do you know how to get that money in your retirement account? Well, that's today's Financial Focus. Fifty-seven million people, almost half of people in the private sector, did not have access to a retirement plan through their employer. Almost half. The SECURE Act is helping people now get a head start on retirement or allow them to catch up on retirement. Let's break everything down. Let's bring in the big man. So you have your ticket for the circus. So let's talk about big top benefits. There's a lot of benefits from the SECURE Act 2.0. We want to get into those. We want to talk about inheritance. There's some changes there. Some is review. Some are changes that we want to go over. And finally, putting it all together so that you can benefit from this new act that uh, was just passed at the end of 2022. And Joe? It's, it's a circus out there, right? It, it is, it's pretty complex, but here's the, if we wanna boil it down real simply, going back to this, 57 million people, half of people in the private sector didn't have access to a retirement account. So think about two people, you got Joan and Jill, same career path, same occupation, same income, right? Jill has a 401k plan through her employer, Joan does not. You fast forward 20 years, who do you think has more money saved for retirement? Of course, it's Jill because she has a plan. It is very easy to check a box and put money into a 401k plan out of sight, out of mind. When you don't have that access to that employer plan, you gotta open up an IRA, and then you gotta write a check to the custodian and things like that, where it's a lot more work, right? It is a lot more work, and, and because of that, you're absolutely right. People that have em employer retirement plans usually end up with a lot more money in retirement. But let's go over some of the changes for 401ks as, as they relate to the SECURE Act 2.0. First of all, they've expanded the, the number of part-time people that can actually qualify for a plan. A couple years, they're gonna add the automatic enrollment for new employees. It's gonna start anywhere between three and 10% of your salary. You can opt out if you don't want to, but most people don't even think about it, so they'll end up saving without even realizing it. And then uh, as far as hardships, now you can actually pull out $1,000 a year from your 401k if you have a hardship. What's a hardship? Any unforeseen circumstance, expense, you get to self-certify, Joe. You get to decide what's a hardship for you. But yeah, you just yeah. get one a year. Got a little sore, <laughs> sore elbow. Uh, catch-up contributions, all right? So now we're gonna be able to put a little bit more away in that piggy bank. 6,500 for 50 plus, uh, starting 2021. Then 2023 here, jumped it up to $7,500. And then in 2025, there's this three or four year catch up that you could put $10,000. So age 60 to 63. So you can start putting and banking a lot more money because people are behind a little bit. And when you get older in life, you're probably in your peak earning years and it's allowing us to put more money pre-tax or after tax, depending on what your plan is or strategy is to get more money into these retirement accounts. Yeah, and interesting, Joe, on these catch up uh, contributions, uh, now it, they have to go into a Roth IRA, or a Roth 401k site, I should say, if you make more than $145,000. So before you could pick, you could do Roth if your plan had it, or regular 401k. Now it has to be a Roth contribution for the catch-ups if you make over that $145,000. Yeah, it's crazy. So when you look at this, right, where is the, this going? Where are retirement plans going? We talked about the Rothification, yes. right? Uh, we're pretty big fans of tax-free money, right? And so, uh, and the, uh, the government is too, for the time being, right? Because they get their tax money today and it allows us to continue to have our growth tax-free. This is a huge benefit, right? 
but it's probably that the tides will turn at some point. There, there will be changes eventually. Let's, let's talk about required minimum distribution. So it used to be 70 and a half where you had to take those distributions. Then it became 72. Now it's 73. Uh, until 2033, it actually becomes 75. So what does that mean? That means you've got money in IRA, 401k. You can let it sit in there longer. You don't have to take it out. You can take it out starting at 59 and a half without penalty. You do pay taxes on it. But now you can, you can delay that required distribution depending upon when you turn 73 or 75, what year it is. This law will benefit a couple of different people. One, people that have IRAs that are still working because you have to take an RMD out of an IRA even if you're still working at these older ages. Um, two, is that it's pushing out the RMD age a little bit longer. For those of you that are using strategy to convert money into a Roth IRA, this will allow you to convert even more dollars before you have that RMD. But keep in mind, most people out spend their RMDs. Yeah. So this law, I mean, it's great, but it, I mean, it, it's not helping the masses. Well, right. It affects people that have a lot of money in IRAs. And so, so you know, that's helpful. A couple things. So the, the penalty used to be 50% if you didn't take the RMD. Now it goes down to 25%. And then it actually then gets changed to 10% if you catch it early enough. And then a big one is Roth 401ks, you used to have to take a required minimum distribution in those two, even though Roth IRA you didn't have to. Now they said, forget about it. There's no RMDs in a Roth 401k. Uh, another benefit here, we have an emergency savings plan. So company worker savings plan, it provides automatic payroll deductions again, right? So it's just simple, out of, sight, out of mind, right into the savings account. Uh, your employer can match the contributions. It's not a ton, but it's $2,500, and the first four withdrawals are you know, penalty and tax-free. So um, just another thing to get people to kind of build those emergency funds. Uh, the next one we want to talk about is QCD plans, uh, QCD Qualified Charitable Distributions. When you're over 70 and a half, you are allowed to put up to $100,000 per person, so $200,000 for a married couple if you both have IRAs. You can actually uh, send that money directly to charity. That's a qualified charitable distribution. What this new act said, at least for 2023 only, you could do a one-time $50,000 additional amount to what's called a split interest, which basically means you're giving to a charity, but you're getting some money back, like a charitable gift annuity, for example. You're giving away out of your 401k or IRA. You're not paying taxes on it, but you will receive some kind of income in the future. Another one, 529. This is a huge buzz going on, right? So let's say you have a 529 plan. These are educational plans for kids for higher education learning. Right, so you put dollars in it, it grows tax deferred, and then when the kids go to school, you can take the money out for qualified expenses to pay for their tuition or books and uh, room and board and things of that nature tax-free. Right? So it was a really good tax-free vehicle, but what was happening is that people had a bunch of balances sitting in these 529 plans, and if you wanted to have access to those plans and did not use them for education, well then you're penalized and taxed. So there's a, a provision here is that right anyone can contribute to a 529 plan right I can contribute for myself call myself the beneficiary but after 15 years that that plan has been established you could roll some of those old 529 plan dollars into a Roth IRA so instead of taking the distribution and paying taxes and penalties you can now move it into a Roth IRA Hold on, it's not as great as everyone kind of is making it out to be. Because the amount that you can roll over into the Roth IRA is the same contribution limit. So $6,000 or $7,000 depending on your age, right? $35,000 is gonna be the max lifetime and you need earned income. So if you're currently retired and do not have earned income, you can't roll the 529 plan into the Roth. So at first it sounded great now, but then you kind of read the fine print and it's yeah. like wah wah. Well, there's so many limitations. It's probably not gonna be that important for most people. But here's one that could be, and that is student loan interest. So this is particularly for young people or younger people that have student loans. So what, the, what this new law is saying is that if you're paying off your student loan, you, if your employer adds this to their 401k plan or, or retirement plan, they can do matching payments into your retirement plan for the student loan amounts that you're paying off. So that's a way to actually pay off your loans and get money into retirement all at the same time. Hey, if you need help with this, you know where to go. Go to our website, yourmoneyyourwealth.com. We got the Secure Act 2.0. 
It's under our special offer. YourMoneyOrWealth.com. We'll break everything down for you. That's our gift to you. We got to take a break. We'll be back in just a second. Welcome back to the show. The show's called Your Money Your Wealth. Joe Anderson, Big Al. We're walking you through the Secure 2.0. Overall, my humble opinion, right? They say it's going to add forty billion dollars, you know, into retirement accounts. Yeah, that sounds great, um, but you know, there's there's a lot of fluff in the overall bill. There's some good things, and of course, there's some things that you know will benefit just a, a, a small few. But overall, we're making trends in the right direction. Let's see how he did on the true false. If you inherit an IRA from your father, you can stretch the withdrawals over your lifetime. True or false? You know what? That used to be true, but Joe, that's no longer true anymore. Yeah, that blew everyone up, right? We had the inherited IRA, which was great because a non-spouse beneficiary could stretch those tax liabilities out over their entire lifetime, right? So if a 30-year-old or a 20-year-old or even a five-year-old right, inherited a large IRA, there wasn't a huge tax liability. With the SECURE Act, and then now the SECURE Act 2.0, that's all changed. They want all of that money depleted out of the overall retirement account in a short period of time. And why do they wanna do that? It's because they want their tax money. So Al, let's break down the different types of beneficiaries that there are. There is the eligible designated, so that would be a spouse and a few other categories, which we'll go into a second. Those people actually can still stretch an IRA so that it does work for them. It's limited, they not doesn't qualify unless you're a spouse. Not a lot of people will qualify. The most common one would be a, a non-eligible designated. And that now, you have to withdraw those funds within 10 years. And then finally, if it's a non-designated, like a charity or something like that, it has to be withdrawn within five years, Jeff. Yeah, so eligible beneficiary. So th the most common, as Al said, surviving spouse, right? They can still continue to stretch those tax liabilities out over their lifetime. But usually what happens with a surviving spouse, so if you're married, one spouse is, dies, they could take that existing IRA of the deceased and then just roll it into their own. A lot of people do that, but depending on the age discrepancy of the spouses, it might make more sense to keep it in the deceased spouse. Um, other minor children can stretch and so on. So the non-eligible beneficiaries, right? So this is the kids, the grandkids, ne nieces and nephews. So non-spouses in some certain trusts, like a living trust, right? This is where the main universe of beneficiaries fall outside of spouses. This is the 10 year rule. You have to deplete that money out within 10 years. So we're talking if it's a large retirement accounts, your kids or grandkids or your non-eligible beneficiaries will probably have a lot larger tax bill over that time period. So again, it gets pretty complex on when that person dies on how they have to take the money out. Is it equal payments over 10 years or can they pick and choose when they wanna pull it out? Non-designated. So let's say if you have a certain trust, right? you wanna control the money from the grave or there's charities involved or things like that. Some people screw up their beneficiary designations all the time. This is the five-year rule, right? So this was the most common. Before the stretch IRA, everything had to come out in five years. Then, the, then they moved the pendulum over here and they let us stretch that tax liability out over our lifetimes. And now they're bringing that pendulum back and say, no, wait a minute, that's way too good a deal. We want our tax money, give it to us now. Yeah, that's, and it's pretty confusing because there's so many changes in all these rules, but let's try to summarize it with this diagram. So the uh, an individual, uh, passes, deceased spouse, uh, that's the little red circle. So what can happen? It can be rolled over to the spouse, right? Surviving spouse gets it. When he or she passes, then it goes over to the children. That's an inherited IRA. Or it could go directly from the deceased person to the kids. That's also an inherited IRA. That's what we're talking about. That's the 10-year uh, withdrawal. And there was a lot of confusion, Joe, at the beginning because it seemed like you could wait till the 10th year. But now with new clarity, you've got to take some each year. Yeah, if the deceased person passed their RBD date, Right, and you have to follow oh, there. Boy, now we're gonna get go deep, right? <laughs> yeah. All you gotta know is that surviving spouses has a lot more choices. So if you are married and you have a spouse and they deceased, um, you can mo move it into your own. You can give it to the kids. But here, this is not. Um, this doesn't apply to the ten-year or five-year rule. So in 2024, 
um, things change a little bit. So they, there's better features for the deceased spouse. So the deceased spouse could keep it in the deceased name, right? And so then they wouldn't be eligible or they wouldn't have to take the RMD until the deceased spouse would have turned their required beginning date, either 73 or 75, depending on what year they were born. So now they're using the lifetime table, which basically is they're shrinking the RMD for the surviving spouse. So there's some added benefit here. Also, if the surviving spouse passes, okay, and then goes to the kids, here, we said, all right, that this is the 10-year option. Not necessarily anymore. They could potentially stretch that. Well, yeah, they can. And so just, just realize maybe the takeaway is now with a surviving spouse, there's actually three different choices and you want to review with your advisor. Uh, when that time comes, hopefully a long time from now, what's going to be the best for you? Great answer, Al. Use your tax advisor. <laughs> 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 or you can go to yourmoneyyourwealth.com and you can click on that special offer. It's our Secure Act 2.0 guide. Go to yourmoneyyourwealth.com, click on the special offer. You can download it right there. You can get the rules, the regs, the details, the fine print, all of that good stuff. Yourmoneyyourwealth.com, click on that special offer. All right, we got to take another break. We'll be back in just a second. All right, welcome back to the circus, folks. It is show time, but before we get to act one, let's see how he did on the true false. You can avoid claiming some income for tax purposes by making distributions from an IRA directly to a charity. True or false? Well, that's true as long as you qualify. So to qualify, you have to have an IRA and you have to be over 70 and a half, but then you can actually distribute directly from the IRA to charity, you will not pay tax on that. You will not get a charitable deduction either, but most importantly, you won't pay tax on the income. It's a great tool for people that are charitable that want to give out of their IRA that don't necessarily need the income. All right, let's talk about growing your wealth with all of these new plans, right? And all these contribution, um, catch-up contribution, new limitations here. So let's say we have our good friend, A.A. Ron. He's 58 years old and he hasn't saved anything. Okay, so he wants to have a good retirement and he's willing to work until age 70. So he's gonna buckle up and say, I'm gonna max out the 401k. So that's $22,500. So the catch up between age 58 and 59, $7,500. So over that time period, that's 60,000 or $30,000 a year that A.A. Ron is going to save inside his 401k plan. And then now, from age 60 to 63, that ketchup goes to $7,500 to $10,000. So he can add a lot more money. So from 60 to 63, he puts in another $130,000 over that five or four year period. And then from age 64 to 70, he's still putting in 22.5, and then it goes back to the ketchup. So now he puts in another 210,000. Let's assume a 6% growth rate. He retires at age 70 with over $600,000. So it's never too late to start, right? So if you're in your 50s and don't have a dime, it's okay. These catch-up contributions is a huge component that can really make a lot of wealth long-term. Well, it is, and that is a common question we get is, you know what, I'm 50, I'm 60, I really got very little in retirement savings or almost none. And this shows now with these new catch-up provisions uh, with the Secure Act 2.0, how, what the, how this can change. Now, I know this is putting a lot of money in, so you're gonna have to figure out how to do that. Easier said than done, but now you're able to do it. And if you really have nothing saved at age 58, you're gonna have to do something. So you, now you've got some ways to do it. All right, we're not clowning around here anymore. Let's talk about Roth conversions. Cool thing about Roth conversions, right? Eliminated RMDs. So when you look at Roth IRAs, or Roth 401ks, Roth 401ks had a required distribution. It made no sense. So it was like, okay, well then they thought, well maybe they're gonna start creating RMDs for Roth IRAs. They wanted to get that tax-free growth out of the Roth IRAs. They did the exact opposite. So now the 401k does not have a required minimum distribution. The Roth IRA does not have a required minimum distribution. So you can continue to parlay tax-free compounding over your lifetime, if you don't necessarily need the money, it's a great wealth transfer too. It could lower your overall taxes when you look at tax diversification, making sure that you have uh, different dollars in different types of tax pools. 
you know, and then of course it's tax-free withdrawals to the beneficiaries. We talked about that stretch is no longer, they have to pull out in 10 years. Well, it'll be easier to pull out 10 years if there's no taxes on those dollars. Yeah, no question. And, and so just to be clear, getting money into a Roth IRA or Roth 401k, so the contribution, that's tax-free when you pull it out. The growth and income is tax-free when you pull it out. If you pass away, it goes to your spouse or your kids, tax-free, or who, whatever your beneficiaries are, tax-free. So you think about this, if you can get more money into a Roth IRA or Roth 401k, have that compounded, now you don't have to do the required minimum distributions out of your Roth 401k, you can com compound that much longer. Now you've got more money for retirement, you've also got more money tax-free for your beneficiaries. All right, uh, let's switch gears. Let's go to Ask the Experts. I have small children and want to save for education. Should I now fund my 529 plan first? From Kate. Uh, Kate, well, 529 plan, of course, is for kids' education. Best when they're young, right? Because you get the money in, it can compound growth over, you know, perhaps 18 years or, or whatever the time frame may be. Yeah, sooner is later. I guess if you're asking, should I do this first before a retirement account? You know, it's both are very important. I, I, I personally would probably want to do some of each, but what do you think, Joe? Well, you can always take a loan for education. You can't take a loan for your retirement, you know, so you want to make sure that you're secure for your overall retirement, you know, so you don't want to bank everything for education and have zero for retirement. So, I mean, I think that's where planning and strategy comes into play. But now if you go into the 529 plan, you can potentially move that into a retirement account. So there's some different um, thought process there. But uh, my humble opinion, right, I, th I think you gotta take care of yourself first um, and then make sure that you, know, you have a strategy long-term. Second one is from Robin. As a part-time worker, do I qualify for my company's retirement plan? Well, Robin, some good news. So with this uh, Secure 2.0, it makes it easier for a part-time person to qualify. Now, it's uh, in, I think in 2024, uh, you have to work uh, 500 hours for two consecutive years, but then you qualify. It used to be you had to work 1,000 hours in every single year. So that rule has changed, helping a lot of part-time people that, no, that didn't get benefits before. Let's wrap this thing up. Let's put a bow on the big top here. We talked about a lot of benefits, $40 billion, right, that we look at that could get funded into retirement accounts over the next several years. We talked about RMD age, 401k access, catch-ups, inheritances, and then the QCDs if you want to look at uh, giving. If you want more information, go to our website, yourmoneyyourwealth.com, click on that special offer. It's our guide to the Secure 2.0. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. For Big L Clopine, I'm Joe Anderson, and we will see you next time.